Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. One subscriber asked me to make a video about Lazar Kaganovich, so today video is about him. Kaganovich was born in 1893 in the village Kabani in Kievan province. He was born in Jewish family. Although Kaganovich claimed he grew up in a poor worker family, yet there were rumors that his father was a livestock merchant. During the World War I, his father got bankrupt after several unsuccessful transactions. Kaganovich finished two classes of elementary school, and when he was 14 years old, he started to work in the factories in Kiev. For some time, Kaganovich worked in the mill as a loader. He was fired due to participation in the protest. Jewish youth, deprived from many rights, eagerly participated in revolutionary activities. In 1905, his older brother became Bolshevik, and in 1911, Kaganovich, following the steps of his brother, joined Bolshevik party. In 1915, he was arrested and sent back to the village. But already in 1916, Kaganovich appeared in Donetsk. After February Revolution 1917, he was appointed to Donetsk Soviet, and in March he left to Kiev to do party work. During October Revolution, Kaganovich participated in uprising in Gomel, and in December he became a delegate on the Third Communist Congress. He was elected to Central Committee and moved to Petrograd. After, he was sent to Moscow as a commissar of Organizational Propaganda Department. During the Civil War, he was in charge of propaganda in Nizhny Novgorod, Voronezh, Central Asia. Afterwards, Kaganovich came back to the party work in Ukraine. In power competition, which happened in 1924, after Lenin's death, Stalin required Ukraine's support for his candidacy. Kaganovich supported Stalin, and in response to his loyalty, Stalin made him a general secretary of Ukraine in 1925. As a general secretary, Kaganovich started to fight with Ukrainian nationalism, getting into confrontation with Ukrainian party members. They even went to Moscow and personally asked Stalin to dismiss Kaganovich. In 1928, he was transferred back to Moscow. However, I don't believe it was done due to harsh attitude toward Ukrainian nationalists. Rather, it was a promotion for Shakhti trial case. The Shakhti trial case was the first important Soviet open trial. Dozens of engineers and managers were arrested in 1927 and 1928 after being accused of conspiring to sabotage the Soviet economy with the former owners of the coal mines. Arrests and prosecution started in Donetsk coal mine and spread to the mines of North Caucasus. The Shakhti trials marked the beginning of the long series of repressions against class enemies. In the beginning of 1930, Kaganovich became a member of Politburo, showing that he was one of the Stalin's closest allies. He was in charge of collective arms and also fighting against kulaks. From 1932 to 1934, Kaganovich went to the Caucasus and became a head of commission for grain procurement. He created a practice to put a village into a blacklist. It meant immediate interruption of goods supply, interruption of any trade, interruption of issuing credits and immediate collection of loans, checking and cleaning collective farms from enemies, arrests of sabotage initiators. There were 15 villages put into a blacklist. In result, hundreds of people died from starvation, more than 16,000 were arrested. Another punishment for not fulfilling grain procurement plan was deportation. Only from three villages, the population of which was 14,500 people, 45,600 people were deported. During the Great Purges, Kaganovich as well as other Stalin's henchmen signed the repression's orders. Kaganovich's signatures was on 189 documents that included names of people who were arrested and killed. In his later years, he commanded repressions in the following way. We are guilty that we oversalted. We thought that there were more enemies than there actually were. I'm not against party decision about this matter. There were mistakes, not only of Stalin, but of all of us. It's easy to judge now when there is no need in a steady hand in fight and no need in violence. 
In 1936, Kaganoj became a head of transportation department. After the beginning of the Second World War and uh, when German troops occupied lands near Moscow, the panic started to rise in the city. Transportation was not operating, people started attacking stores. So Kaganovich was dismissed from transportation department. But soon after, Stalin thought that decision was premature as the evacuation of industrial complex from European part to Siberia was successful. Kaganovich controlled transportation until 1944. After the war, Kaganovich started to lose Stalin's trust. Stalin did not invite him for dinners and rarely met him. After Stalin's death, Kaganovich entered into an agreement with Khrushchev and Malenkov to outflank Beria, which, as you know from my previous Beria video, ended up successfully for Khrushchev. Kaganovich's brother Mikhail was rehabilitated after his death. Stalin had one game for his henchmen. To check their loyalty, Stalin arrested their close relatives, friends, and colleagues. Would they oppose or obey? Kaganovich's brother killed himself while waiting for arrest. Kaganovich considered Khrushchev as his candidate, but in 1950s they became equal in terms of power and influence, and later Khrushchev outflanked him. In 1957, he was accused of being a member of anti-communist group Malenkov Molotov Kaganovich, and he was fired from all posts. In 1961, he was excluded from Communist Party. Kaganovich died in the age of 97, five months before the collapse of Soviet Union. That's it for today. Let me know in the comments what other Stalin's henchmen are you interested in, and I will make video about them. Thank you for watching my videos and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.